Hey YouTube, welcome back. Today we will talk about the moon base and the Artemis program. The Artemis program is intended to re-establish a human presence on the moon since the Apollo 17 moon mission in 1972. The program's stated long-term goal is to establish a permanent base on the moon to facilitate human missions to Mars. Now before the countdown begins, don't forget to subscribe and let's go to the moon. The journey to the moon is complex and made up of these main elements. The SLS rocket to escape Earth's gravity, the Orion spacecraft to take us to the moon and back, the Gateway space station in moon's orbit, and the human landing system for descent and ascent from the moon. Let's look at these in more detail. NASA Space Launch System SLS is a super heavy lift rocket that is the primary launch vehicle for NASA's Artemis moon landing program. The SLS is designed to carry astronauts, cargo, and the Orion spacecraft directly to the moon in a single launch. The SLS is the only rocket that can do this, and it's built to carry people, cargo, farther and faster than any other rocket in history. All space launch system flights are launched from Launch Complex 39B at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The first three SLS flights use a Block 1 configuration comprising core stage extended space shuttle boosters developed for Ares 1 and the ICPS upper stage. An improved Block 1B configuration with the exploration upper stage is planned for the fourth flight. A further improved Block 2 configuration with the new solid rocket boosters is planned for the ninth flight. Now the question is, what is the role of the Orion? On Artemis missions, Orion will carry the crew to space, provide emergency abort capability, sustain the crew during the space travel to the moon and back, and provide safe re-entry from deep space return velocities. Orion will launch on NASA's new heavy lift rocket SLS. The Orion spacecraft is made of three primary components, the launch abort system, the crew module, and the service module. The Orion crew module is a reusable transportation capsule that provides a habitat for the crew, provides storage for consumables and research instruments, and contains the docking port for crew transfers. The crew module is the only part of the spacecraft that returns to Earth after each mission. The European service module is the service module component of the Orion spacecraft serving as the primary power and propulsion component until it is discarded at the end of each mission. In the event of an emergency on the launch pad or during ascent, the launch abort system LAS will separate the crew module from the launch vehicle using three solid rocket motors. Next, let's look at the Gateway. The Gateway space station is the key part of NASA's Artemis campaign to return humans to the moon. It will be the first international space station to orbit the moon and will serve as the base for scientific research, technology development, and exploration missions. It will consist of several modules. The first module we'll talk about is the HALO. The HALO, or the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, also known as the Minimal Habitation Module, will be the scaled-down habitation module as part of the Lunar Gateway. It will be built by Northrop Grumman Innovation Systems. The next system is the IHAB. The IHAB, which is the Habitation Module, will offer around 10 cubic meters of living space or the volume inside a medium camper van. Together with NASA's Habitation and Logic Outpost HALO module, there'll be enough room for up to four astronauts staying up for 90 days at a time on the lunar station. The lunar I have will be the living, sleeping and dining room for the astronauts, as well as allowing experiments to run both inside and outside the module. Next up, we have already covered Orion spacecraft that will be bringing astronauts to and from the gateway. Next is the Maxar's Power and Propulsion Element PPE, which will provide power, maneuvering, attitude control and communication systems for the gateway. It has a solar electric ion propulsion module and capable of generating up to 60 kilowatts. Next up is the logistics. As astronauts prepare for mission to the lunar surface, they will need deliveries of critical pressurized and unpressurized cargo, science experiments and supplies, such as sample collection materials and other items. In March 2020, NASA awarded SpaceX as the first US commercial provider under the Gateway Logistics 
Logistics Services contract to deliver cargo and other supplies to the lunar outpost. Esprit module will provide refueling through additional xenon and hydrazine capacity ERM for the use in power and propulsion elements ion engines and hydrazine thrusters. It will also provide additional communication equipment HLCS, a habitation area and some storage. GERS, the Canadian Space Agency CSA is providing the next generation external Canada ARM-3 robotic arm and advanced robotic interfaces to host payloads. Then there is the airlock. NASA and the UAE's Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center MBRSC announced that the UAE would contribute the crew and science airlock for the gateway. The module will allow gateway crews to perform spacewalks outside the gateway as well as install and retrieve external science payloads. Then the HLS located as shown here will be covered in the next section. The Human Landing System or HLS. NASA awarded a contract to SpaceX for its Starship HLS that will put the first Artemis astronauts on the moon. NASA and SpaceX teams are working together to ensure the company's design meets all the mission safety requirements. SpaceX will perform one uncrewed demonstration mission prior to the use of their systems in Artemis 3 mission the first human surface expedition since 1972. NASA currently has worked on the contract with SpaceX and Blue Origin to develop landing systems that meet agency's requirements for recurring services, such as the ability to dock with the gateway for crew transfer, increased crew size, or more mass to the surface. For its landing site selection, NASA evaluated multiple sites for landing as shown near the lunar south pole. The shortlist of regions is based on the ability to accommodate a safe landing using criteria like terrain slope, ease of communications with Earth, and lighting conditions. In this region, the sun will hover just above the horizon, casting long dark shadows across the terrain, which the crew will explore using headlamps and navigational tools. And that brings us to the end of the episode. Hmm. Artemis mission is a bold new step towards moon and beyond. A lot of partners with NASA will have collaborated in the next 10 years to make this a success. Further research on moon could perhaps convert lunar water into rocket fuel. This could mean launching humans to Mars from Earth may not require a full tank of gas and just a refueling station near the moon. So friends, what do you think about the Artemis mission? Why did NASA choose its strategy of using commercial providers? Please leave some comments below. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe my channel and I hope to meet you very soon in another video. Keep refueling your curiosity and now brace for re-entry in 3, 2, 1.